you played with and against a number of great international backs during your career. If we talk about centres, the toughest ones are amongst sort of Frank Bunce, Sterling Mortlock, Mike Tyndall, O'Driscoll, Conrad Smith. Um, all yeah, different. All very different. Um, you know, like you say, with Bunce and, um, you know, he, he was just, he had a bit of an aura about his physical nature and, you know, you knew that uh, you're in for a bit of a, uh, bit of a <laughs> physical contest uh, with him. Um, and I remember that, you know, being a young guy playing against him. Um, I, I think probably played more so against Dirley Mortlock, um, and I you know, really respected the way he, his game and how it developed and, you know, the kind of player he became. Um, you know, with Brian, he, he was probably the best attacking centre that um, you come across. Uh, but, again, we didn't play uh, enough to, against each other, and um, uh, I, I never played against Conrad, mm. apart from when I played uh, Petone versus University. Right. Um, in his very younger days and he beat me and uh, I remember that um, and he, I think he keeps remind, he kept reminding me about that day. <laughs> um, Tell me about playing with and against another guy who loomed large in the All Black circles around your time, Jonah Lomu. <laughs> How difficult was it to compete against that man? Oh. Well to be honest I, I think with coming through in the same era as Jonah um, he really helped my rugby because um, you know I started off as a winger and uh, in the New Zealand Colts um, in the trials I marked him you know and you know, I went the very first I think try that he got you know, I went the way a lot of players went and then I ended up in face down on the ground and him running around me and but um, you know I didn't give up I, I got a couple more opportunities against him and I didn't I didn't do so bad that day and you know, I really think that's what got me. To, into the final side, so you know, and I think he was just the, you know, the benchmark of all us young guys coming through who wanted to play on the outside backs. And you know, you'd have to come against Jonah and um, try your best. It was like, you know, if you can go well against him, then people will notice. So you know, that's how I think we all held him um, coming through, and obviously getting to play with him so much you know, when he came to Wellington and the Hurricanes and and, and in the All Blacks. Um, I think uh, you never come across anyone that was something like that. He had the speed, the power. Um, you, know, you wouldn't find a more, uh, um, how would you say, giving person. Yeah. You know, he always wanted to give for the team, give for the players. He always helped people out. Um, and I suppose it's a little bit sad that we didn't obviously didn't get to see uh, more of him. And you know, all his issues that he's going through now with his health and. Um, but playing with him during that time when it was first coming on, and you know, we feel a little bit bad that we didn't know more about it. Mm. You know, he, he kept it to himself quite a bit, mm. and um, you know, and I still find it staggering that here is a man with that, that illness who was still able to swat away uh, any number of men who were big physical mm. defenders uh, in a game. It, just seemed extraordinary to me. Yeah, exactly that. You know that last year that he had, and he played for us. You know we had all us players were wondering what was wrong with him, and um, but you know he could do things uh, that no one else could do. And you know, you know we didn't know the issues that he was going through, and but he was still like as you're saying, you know, in some periods of games he was just doing outstanding things, and I was yeah that's the journey with. And then all of a sudden, you know we think oh you know then you oh it's fitness he's not doing enough work. Mm. And then you'd see him working as hard as he can. Um, and then you hear that you know, he's got these things happening in his body that no one else could probably cater for and could deal with. And he was turned up, you know, not wanting to make mm. a big issue out of it. Mm. Speaking of extraordinary men, a, a guy who followed you as All Black captain has got quite an extraordinary career. Does it amaze you that he is still going, A, as a player, and B, as the captain after? Succeeding you, um, he's still going up at great guns, isn't he? Um, I don't think it's. I'm not amazed that he's he, he's you know, still going um, because I think he just. I don't think I've ever met a person that has such mental fortitude that he'll just will himself to go. Mm. You know, and I think you saw that last year when 
you'd had such a long time off having a sabbatical, and then all of a sudden, first test, you'd think you'd never missed, skipped a beat or never missed a game, you know, because to be able to play at that intensity as he did, um, and in a test match, uh, let alone, and it was like it was just, you know, Rich has always been playing here, you know, and, and I think that's just you know, his biggest attribute is just you know, his state of mind and his mindset that he can force himself mm. to go where a lot of people don't like to go. Mm. Um, and that's what I've always respected about him. And, um, and you know, it'll be when he decides to go, I think. Um, he puts his body in places no one else likes to continuously, knowing that it'll be, you know, yeah. Some so people will be trying you to You discovered it. the grind and what it's like after 70 odd tests, and here he is playing in a, as a loose forward and 120 and still probably keeping going till the next World Cup. Well, this is right. This is right. You know, and, you know, again, I wouldn't bet against him not reaching that. So you know, we're, we're, I think we're a lot uh, better mm. off having him around and being able to teach and the, the new guys coming mm. through. While he's doing that, your challenges are in the coaching area. You've got counties, again, Ranfurly, Shield and all this sort of stuff. Tell me about that excitement of, of last season. Oh, yeah, well, you know, the Ranfurly Shield was something that, um, one, I thought that I'd never get my hands on. Mm. Um, I, I was never able to do it as a player. And, um, and then as a coach, you know, I thought, oh, you know, we'll go down and have a crack. And to be honest... We didn't talk about it that much, you know. One because I thought, oh, well, it's never going to happen for me. So I said, and I apologised to our players. I said, Sorry, guys, you know, it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime. But you just <laughs> never know if we just. So we kind of, I think, took that out of the equation a little bit. Yeah. Um, but um, it's been a lot for us in terms of our community and you know, the people that have been able to see it and touch it, and uh, it did a lot for our players as well, uh, just to give them a bit more self belief that. Mm. You know, they can do things when they set mind, their minds to it. So have you attracted some more exciting talent to the area this year, do you think? Um, oh, I that? think we have. I think we have. Uh, I think we're, we're seen now as a, a viable team that you can push uh, for further uh, you know, for further aspirations. And you know, we're, We've been fortunate enough to sign um, Paul Asimanu from Auckland and Jordan Tolfu from, from Canterbury. Yeah. Um, these guys, obviously, Jordan's from mm. South Auckland, so mm. you know, he's virtually just coming home and Pauli is just coming down the road from <laughs> um, but, but into the Chiefs region so you know pulling these kind of quality players in is, is always um, is probably a bit of first for us you know we've had to rely on a lot of youngsters and a lot of local talent um, um, but again we, you know these guys that have come through our our systems and our the likes of Tim and I, Williams, Fritz Lee, who's mm. was gone overseas, and Shu and Stowers, mm. and Simon Lamola. These guys have been sticking around for a long time. They've probably paved the way to show you that if you, you stick with it, and you know we get we do some good things, and you know you adhere to the basics of the game. That you know there there is a future for you at our at our union. What about you? Are you going to stick with with coaching? Is is this something that you see? You want to go further in in coaching, or where do you see that leading to? What are your aspirations? Oh, I think I'm like any other coach. I want to be the best I can be, and um, obviously the pinnacle coaching is always uh, to be coach of the best team, and that's the All Blacks, I believe. Um, but you know, they only have three coaches <laughs> here, one head coach, so there's a lot of us coaches out there. So you're quite happy. It's an it's not a hurried journey. You want to learn a lot slowly. Oh, exactly, um, and I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, you know, I've been overseas, I've learnt over there um, with Toulon. Um, I've come back now and I'm learning at a, a more base level. Um, and I'm really enjoying that and giving back um, to local talent. And um, I, I think playing at the top level now, you know, my, our role as you know, ITM co coaches and, and the, those below is to keep developing talent mm -hmm. so we can keep our status as the number one team in the world. And, you know, I think. In South Auckland, we've got a great catchment of players, you know, mm. and you know, I think that's what we should be doing, you know, trying to mm. keep our country strong and uh, the All Black brand strong. So mm. um, we want to make sure that the players that come through can represent them and themselves and their families well. Great stuff. Well, we hope you keep developing, Tana, in your coaching and in your career. Lovely to have you here today. Cheers, Wood.